Put the gun down before you kill someone. Teenage Girls Diary. Hello, and welcome to another Dollar Store Drive-In. I'm your host, Laura. I'm Joel. And we're the Newly Deads. Yes, we is. Thank you very much for tuning in. If this is your first time watching, we are a half-hour chat show where we discuss a movie that we watched and have lots of thoughts on. Uh, if this is not your first time watching, welcome back. Thank you for joining us again. We appreciate you. We love you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us again. Um, besides a show, we also uh, use this as a podcasting uh, material <laughs> uh, where you can actually listen to this on usually Spotify. That's where I upload it. I don't know where else Spotify throws it out into the ether. Ether. The ether? Yeah. The ether. I know. I always want to see the neither world. Yeah. Bailey's like, the ether. What's the ether? What's the ether? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I made the noise this time. You did make the noise. Um, and uh, so we do record this out of our house. Bailey is sitting on my husband's lap right now. <laughs> uh, Shaggy keeps walking back and forth. So we encourage you, if you are listening to this, to also check us out. Uh, you can find us at thenewlydeads.com uh, for all of the places that we are featured. Um, one of them, of, of course, is YouTube. You can go to our YouTube channel. We also have a lot more content on there. Um, besides this show, we also do Sinister Snacks. We do caffeinated reviews sometimes. Um, Joel does unboxing videos, all sorts of fun, different kinds of things. We always try to throw it with a spooky sort of um, spin on things most of the time. Um, but yeah, so uh, happy October. I know this is probably smack dab in the middle of October. So uh, this is our favorite time of the year. And hopefully uh, you're enjoying yourself. Uh, during this beautiful month as well. Um, but uh, in order to get back to the dollar store dri drive-in stuff, uh, <laughs> we have some criteria for the show. Uh, the first thing is um, the shows that we watch need to be under $5. They need to be a horror, sci-fi, thriller genre. Mm -hmm. uh, and it needs to be a movie that we neither of us have ever seen. How's that possible? I know, because Joel watches a lot of films. A lot. And I watch a lot of films, and sometimes I forget what they are. Me too. <laughs> so, uh, this week, we watched a uh, movie that you found at... It looks like it's got a missing sticker thing yeah, on it. Yeah, where did so. I get that from? It was, at a, it was at some sort of a resale shop. Yep. And uh, I was like, Tara Reed and a spooky movie. Sold. Done. It's got to be gold. Uh, it's called Incubus. Or as we've been lovingly calling it. Incubus. 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 Um, so I'm going to read the synopsis of this little gem here. And uh, yeah, so you ready for this? Ready as I'll ever be. All righty. In the dead of night, a group of lost college students. Did you catch that when we were watching it? What? College students. Yeah, they, I don't, they, I mean. They don't seem like college students. Anyways. Uh, <clears throat> A group of lost college students stumble upon what appears to be an abandoned laboratory hidden deep within the woods. Cold and exhausted, they break in only to find the hallways littered with dead bodies. Coming across a coma patient locked within an isolation cell, they discover the Sleeper, a deranged murderer who can literally dream his way into their minds. So when her friends are transformed into bloodthirsty, axe-wielding killers, a terrified young woman tries desperately to escape. For when the sleeper decides it's her time to die, all he has to do is wait for her to fall asleep. Yep. I got a kiss on the nose from the sleeper. <laughs> is he the sleeper? Apparently. Uh-huh. Oh. Weird stuff on the back <sighs> here, kisses. by the way. Like, what, what's going on there? Uh, that part. This dude. I don't know, I don't know who that dude is. It doesn't look like the dude in the movie. Weirdness. We have lots of thoughts, though. So. We do have lots of thoughts on this movie. Uh, it's unrated. I have, I have information about the film that, that uh, 
Ooh. Might surprise you. Might not care about it, but it was interesting, so I wrote it down. This is the unrated edition. I don't know if there was another version or not. Uh, okay, so I think we can probably show the trailer. Yep. Uh, can it be some sort of like medical cart? <laughs> try. I never, I never know until I like actually a do gurney. It. <clears throat> like gurney does that wheels? help? Yeah. Something with wheels, you know? Wheels. Well, it's got to have wheels typically or, or a gurney of some sort. it can be a gurney okay <clears throat> yeah because it's like a medical laboratory kind of dealio that's going on uh okay so we're gonna have you watch the trailer i'm gonna watch it with you because this will be the first time i'm actually watching the show all the way through so join me while you're watching it and uh we'll be right back sound good sounds like a plan all right we'll be right back anybody hurt Yes! Where are we? Wherever we are. We're gonna make it to the highway before dark. Mm. What the hell is that? It's not on the map. Hello? Hi. Looks like it's completely sealed up. If we stay out here, we're gonna freeze. Jay, come on, this is crazy. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> Something? No! What are you doing? Open the door. He's not dead. He's in some sort of coma. Who's that? Maybe there's a way out. The Defense Intelligence Agency, the CIA, they've been studying him for years. What's remote viewing? It's where you see things and they're not really there. When Peter fell asleep, something happened to him. He dreams them. He dreams through them. Come on, you gotta see this. Incubus demon that entered into your sleep. This is crazy. How long can you stay awake? An hour? A day? What happens when you fall asleep? You have to leave this place right now. Hello? We're back. Hopefully you enjoyed that flatulent trailer. <laughs> Maybe. I never know until I start doing it. Sometimes not, there's not one farting, fart. Sometimes it's all fart. Depends on the film and how the, what the trailer leads the way. Whatever the trailer shows me is where we end mm. up. Because as we mentioned in last week's episode, the editor is myself. And, and I the talk trailer is your person, muse. And the trailer is my little, little mm. squeaky toy that I play with. Um, so... During the course of the film, I take notes. Sometimes Miss Newly does take notes. I draw pictures, and it gives us a guideline for the show. And then at the end of the year, she collects all the notes, which I have been storing on our shared drive. And then she puts them into a little flippy book, and you all can check them out and go, hmm, wasn't Weird. that interesting? Or you'll be like, huh, that's great. Or I don't know. I think it's interesting. He always draws cute little cartoons. You're there for the art. Which he's probably going to show me right now. I am. So um, this week I drew... Um, for some oh. reason, I, I did Pac-Man Pac -Man and Blinky. Mm -hmm. Blinky is a tattoo on my arm. What is I drew an, an egg? egg that's broken. I don't know why. I just started drawing a little oval, and it came out to be an egg. And then I just a drew boo a, a boo bucket. I don't know if it actually technically exists, but I illuminated it. <laughs> uh, so it's an illuminated boo bucket. An illuminated boo bucket. An illuminated boo bucket. And, and it's, you know, October, so that's appropriate. The boo buckets uh, came out on the 15th. I know. We're not a fan of the Boo Buckets this year. If you've seen them, I don't know. I think they're going to be cute for kids, though. I was telling one of my coworkers about it today, and she was very excited to show her kids because her kids like Happy Meals and stuff. And yeah. For they, kids. They've, they've been collecting the Croc toys that were in there. <laughs> uh, I know. But people for kids, like it's them. cute. It's fine. Yeah, they have like little monsters on them and stuff. Which we've collected uh, the last couple of years, and we've been going back and buying the original ones as we find them in flea markets. I love finding like the old school boo buckets. Oh, yeah. I uh, have one 
that has the cookie cutter in the top. Those are always my favorite. Um, but yeah, I think I only have one that has a cookie cutter. Yeah. And then the other ones, yeah, have... Uh, but we've got like old school ones. The old school ones were just so much better because they had lids, you know? They were, I think, a little bit bigger. A little Maybe bit bigger, a little bit more sturdy. <clears throat> yeah, the ones that we've got in the last couple, or we're looking up there because that's where they're at. Um, but yeah, we've got about four buckets. Yeah, it looks like we got like we had four. more than that. So did I, but it looks like we have four. Um, hmm. So I thought you know, I had a white one too. If, if you know where to find them or want to, you know, yeah. send them our way. Contact at the newly right. dot com. If we'll you see have what we boo buckets to sell, like the old school <clears throat> ones. Or we can work out some sort of a deal. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, we're not here to talk boo buckets. That's another episode. I mean, it could uh, be. I, think, I mean, it could be. We could have a whole episode <clears throat> on our YouTube channel. Oh, right. We've talked about showing off some of the things in the house that people are probably curious about. One of these days. We're, we're spooky, cute creators and we like to collect things. So you might someday see what we have lying around. But. Yeah. So Incubus is from 2006. Currently sitting at 3.0 out of 10 on the Internet Movie Database. And there's a reason for that. So this was directed by Anya Camilleri, who has done lots of TV and short films. Merry Christmas. Uh, this was written by Gary Humphreys, who uh, did something called True True Lie. And that's all. And then this. Is that like two truths and a lie? I'm guessing that's what they were going for, but why not call it Two Truths and a Lie instead of True True Lie? True True Lie. It just sounds, sounds like, weird. Like a train. Uh, so this stars one Tara Reid that we mentioned earlier, who is from the American Pie uh, franchise, which, as we mentioned last week, probably hasn't aged well. I haven't watched it in a while. Uh, she's from the Sharknado franchise, which has aged like fine wine. All six of those films are fantastic. It celebrates the whole catalog. I do, and I've watched them all multiple times. And she was in something called Mummy Dearest, which is spelled as in, you know, shambling mummy from the mm. grave. So I'm going to see if we can track that one down at some point. Because uh, she is a fine actress when she's crying and upset. But when she's not, she is not the best. Uh, no offense, Miss Reed. Uh, so anyway, this also stars Akemnaji did uh, Deforenyen. I know I'm butchering that probably. It's a lot of letters that don't feel like they should go together, and I'm sure they probably are fine and are probably super easy to say, but I'm having difficulty. I should have looked mm. ahead. Uh, he was in a film called Tango One, The Last Witness, and Catherine Called Birdie. I don't know what that was. It just sounded interesting. Yeah. Um, it also stars uh, Monica Barladena, which I threw her on there as we were watching because she was kind of a one of the more major characters. She was in something called Caved In, which again, something we should probably watch at some point. Do It or Shut Up, which it is very like aggressive. Yeah, it's very know? aggressive. And uh, Second in Command, which I guess if you are not the commander in chief, then you are second in command. So at this point, my lovely wife turns to me and says, What'd you think? Now we really get true, true and a lie. <laughs> Uh, there's actually no lies. It's all true. Um, so the trivia I mentioned earlier is that this was the first direct-to-download film in history. Uh, it premiered on the internet and then was released through, you got it, AOL. Wow. Right? 2006, I thought AOL was like gone. Uh, I mean, it wasn't gone. Still use, it's still around. But my parents still use it. I know. Fairly certain my parents still use AOL. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit of fun history, which hopefully you threw that, uh, AOL ping pong ding, 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 noise or whatever. you got mail. Yes. <laughs> if I can find it, I'm sure I can track it down. Um, so this started out, the soundtrack felt like a Richard band film, like the score sounded like a Richard band score, which Richard band is Charles band's brother. Charles band is the head of empire pictures. And then later on full moon entertainment, which we bring him up a lot on the show for some reason, because I read his book and. We like full moon we do. features. Um, but the reason I mentioned that is because it was actually written by Simon Boswell, who is a rather well-known composer. Um, when I heard the name, I'm like, that sounds kind of familiar. So I looked up his filmography. So I'm throwing a little extra little history for you. He did Shallow Grave, the 1996 uh, Ewan McGregor, Danny Boyle film with Christopher Eccleston and um, hmm. uh, Kelly. No, not Kelly. I forgot the other, the actress's name that's in it. Anyway, 
if you've never seen it, it's a crime thriller. It is fantastic. It's on the shelf. I watched it when it came out on video. What's with, it called? Uh, Shallow Grave. Hmm. It's about three roommates that live in a flat in England or in London somewhere. I think it might be Scotland. I don't remember. And um, they come into some money through some reason that is best left to watch the movie. And they end up deciding they're going to keep it. And that turns into a, you oh, know, a murder thing. thing because nobody wants to share. Mm. But it was the first time I saw Ewan McGregor, uh, other than Train Spotting. Like I saw them right around the same time. I don't know which one was first. I saw Train Spotting in the theater. And I fell in love with Ewan McGregor and have celebrated his entire catalog. Oh, yeah. But he was fantastic in this early film for him. Uh, he also did the score for uh, Hardware, which is another movie that I was just talking about recently that is getting a Blu ray release finally. Woo! Um, which is another fantastic uh, movie about a military robot that goes nuts and starts killing people in a post-apocalyptic kind of future. And I put this one here just for you. Demons 2. Ah, Demoni. Yeah. <clears throat> Demons 2, which if you've not seen Demons or Demons 2, it's an Italian film with demons kind of in a zombie type thing. And it is crazy. And Demons 2, I will take this, I'll fight you on, be the hell I die on. It's got to be where they got the idea for Evil Dead Rise because it is very similar in plot. A lot of the beats are the same. It's very similar. Yeah. So Demons um, is a pretty good movie. What? Demons? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I like both it. of them. Um, they're both on the shelf, actually. So as soon as it started, I was like, is this a Frankenstein story? Because it felt like a mm. kind of like a Frankenstein and his monster sort of situation mm. at first when you see uh, the guy in the chair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not very believable to find a weird laboratory in the middle of the woods that still has all of the stuff connected to it. Like, I understand that they needed to have some sort of, like, crazy reason for being in this laboratory. But, like, why does it have to be in the middle of the woods? Like, they could have had it in any setting. It didn't need to be in Montana in the middle of the woods somewhere. Like, it was just kind of odd, like, S their choice. Is it in the same world as Black Cadillac? <laughs> well, that was in Wisconsin. But they were also near Montana, right? No. Minnesota. Minnesota. Never Ooh, mind. Montana is on the Ooh. other side of the country. I'm corn fused. Yeah. Um, well, it felt like the location, I, it, it kind of reminded me of um, uh, House on Haunted Hill, the original. But what it really reminded me of, and I'm not sure it's not the same location, was Blair Witch 2 Book of Shadows, which is a piece of garbage. Um, that sequel is awful. It's almost as bad as The Exorcist 2 The Heretic. But. It looks a lot like the place where they spend time there, at least in my brain. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. Um, but I think the reason I kind of got the Frankenstein thing in my head is that the main bad guy that's the comatose dude in the chair that can possess you in your sleep, he looks a lot like David Prowse, who you might know as Darth Vader from the uh, Star Wars films. He was in a film called The Horror of Frankenstein, which is a loose reboot of the Hammer Frankenstein series. And um, they look very similar. Mm. Like they look a lot alike. I'll mm -hmm. put an image of them here so you can see. I'll maybe try and find if I have both. Um, but <laughs> the title kind of lent itself to us singing Incubus songs all, all day. Incubus. Incubus. Um, so they, they go. They, they find this guy in a chair. They find everybody dead. They don't want to get blamed for it. They can't get out for some reason. Like They go in through the roof. They, they like spelunk down into the, the building and then can't get back out. So they're trying to find an exit. They're dealing with all these dead bodies. They don't want to get blamed for it. And soon they start dying off one by one as this guy's <clears> taking them over and he's murdering everybody in the place. And it just becomes this like real chaotic kind of super slow like slod. And the, the thing is, it's only 87 sludge. minutes long. It's not a very long movie, but it seemed really long. Like yeah. I was not, I was pretty bored. I did not fall asleep. She did not. Luckily, otherwise she might have got possessed. Yeah, I was um, drawing while I was watching. So I was drawing know. conclusions. It's 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 a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A, a, slod, a slow burn. A slod, you a always say it's a slow of, burn. No, this was just like a. It was hard. It was like it was like a dirge. Is not even the word I'm looking for. Like a, just slotting along. I don't it know, was just, like. It was, it was, it was a stretch. Like they, like the, all of the plot points were just 
none of the acting was great. They all seemed like they were like really trying extra when, it, but it wasn't, it was just kind of falling short on some of the acting. Um, a lot. A lot. Yeah. And uh, it just wasn't, I mean, definitely wasn't scary. Nope. Um, the guy that they had for the main antagonist was sleeping most of the time. And so you're like, okay, am I supposed to feel bad for this guy? Obviously he's the incubus dude or whatever, but like, you know, he murdered his mom or something like that. But then you find out the reason that he murdered his mom is because he was abused. And like, she sees this guy and she's like, Oh, I know who that is. It's that kid that like bit his own tongue off and then killed his mom. And then he was on death row and like all this stuff. And like, like, why is he in this basement? Like, why did she know all that? He's like a literally like this, like, almost reanimated corpse looking kind of thing. He's got all these tubes in him with like his head shaved off. And I know she found some files and stuff. She watched a bunch of old VHS tapes. Oh, right. Um, that, that they had laying around history on it. Well, it was the lab where they were keeping him. Why would you have that though? It's just weird. But like the whole premise is, is that this guy is, was massively abused. He was kept in a very small cell for most of his life or, or was kept, you know, uh, he wasn't left to live his own life. And so, he basically learned how to kind of leave his body. Yeah. And that's how he got out of, you know, dealing with this horrible situation that he was given. Um, it just wasn't very It was almost like as astral projecting kind right. of thing or whatever. They so, even say that at one point. Yeah. And it seems like it's like supposed to be kind of Freddy Kruger-ish, you know, where he can like infect people in their dreams, but then they turn into like almost like a zombie. Like he, he turned, it turned, they turn into him essentially. Like he's using their body to. Like possessing them. To do his whatever he yeah. wants to do. Which for some reason, he's this tragic figure. So she thinks that, oh, he's a tragic figure like Frankenstein's monster. So. She feels bad for maybe him. Maybe if I either A, put him out of his misery, which is kind of what he either wanted or. That's what she thought he wanted. Get him unplugged and let him go, which wasn't, you know, the best idea. So they decide, you know, yeah, they're going to she wanted him to help him. Um, and then, um, so they're like testing their own theories about stuff or whatever. And so, you know, they realize that when you fall asleep, then like you turn into this bloodthirsty like killer or whatever. So they like test it on this one girl. She's like, make sure, you know, that things are fine. And like, and so they put a gag in her mouth. So like, that way she wouldn't cut off her tongue or whatever. And, and she ends up doing it anyways. And they're like, oh, she can't breathe. So they immediately take it off and then they have to kill her because she's like trying to bite them and stuff. And Which, like, I think that was a little <laughs> extreme. I don't know what Agreed. the choice was with that, where they were going to make the, one of the characters kill her just to stop her. I mean, she was a very tiny woman. Like she was, Super petite. They could have short, restrained her. Small. They could have between the two of them, Tara Reed and and him, could have easily like held her down. That or scene lasted way too long. Something. It was it was a weird just decision. I guess they were just trying to get rid of bodies. Um, but the whole movie felt really kind of dumb and pointless. And then once the guy they kill him and they think you know everything's over, so they're gonna leave. This is not spoiler free, by the way. No, <laughs> you don't need to watch this. Yeah. Um, we're when. He first starts talking. He sounds like if Forrest Gump and Nell had a baby. Um, he keeps saying, JJ. But then like, we're like, how is he talking? He's supposed words. to have no tongue. But he, he at first he sounds like he's having difficulty, like he's saying things that doesn't require his tongue. Mm. But sooner or later, he's like, full score and seven years ago. Yeah, he's like, JJ, I want to be you know. inside you. And like saying like all this weird stuff. Uh, not only that, but okay. He's been locked in this room for God knows how long. With like a port right here in his stomach and like a port in his heart and a port in his brain he and moved. just being pumped full of something. And then you find out that I think that the reason all those ports and stuff were put in him is because like they were trying to keep him asleep and trying to like comatose. keep him <clears throat> in this comatose state or whatever because like he's a bloodthirsty like I'm going to murder everybody kind of thing. And all of a sudden, I mean, he's literally just this noodle little noodle guy. And then as soon as they take out all those things, he's like buff. Yeah. And like walking around like, I don't know I'm going to find you, JJ. But he's still slow. You I know? don't know how he was able to walk. And then he eventually uh, is crawling a rope. Like he's crawling oh, up a rope. Just like, like it's nothing. I can't do that. And I'm 
I move around all the time and I'm going to find you. Somehow he just magically is like, Let's and this go. is her way of like trying to kill him. Like she lets him go up the rope and then she's like, it's time for you to end. And she just starts going like this, like with the a rope. bell. Like she's trying to ding a bell. And then he falls bell. off and that's supposed to be his demise. Like their friend did the exact same thing when they were coming down that rope. Yep. And like they were fine. He was fine. I mean, he, he, it wasn't a very out of him, long but... fall. It wouldn't have killed anybody unless they landed on their head and which broke he their neck, not. which he didn't. He just fell like this with one of his little legs, like bent a little bit, not even bent. So it looks broken. Bad. This movie was uh, not believable. Just say it was dumb and pointless. And the ending was telegraphed like, oh, yeah, miles away. Because when it ended and it just kept going, you're like, okay. Yeah, she's like, oh, he's finally dead. So then she like collapses and falls asleep. And then she starts dreaming weird, weird stuff. <clears throat> and then wakes up or whatever. And then realizes that the sheriff is there uh, and arrests her. Because he's Which, like, what happened here, lady? How did the sheriff get in? And because one of their friends leaves and is going to go get help. And, and she you're did. like, oh, she's not going to come back. And you would have but... thought she would have been like, no, that's my friend or whatever. Like, you know, she's the one that needed the help. But she's just like, oh, I told you away. I'd be back or whatever. I like, missed her. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. And then, you know, surprise, surprise. Guess who's been possessed by the dude. Forrest Nell. Yeah. Her eyes are, they, they turn into his eyes or whatever. It's He's got just, like weird, like. Lame. Gray eyes and. Lame. It was just, it was, I, I wrote, the very last thing I wrote in my notes was, what in the hell happened? Oh, who cares? Yeah. Uh, so at this point. Yeah, so on a scale of zero or whatever, like negative to million to five, uh, I don't know, tongues. Oh. They kept talking about biting his tongue off mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. I have to remember that. Uh, what would you give it? Uh, well, I, I, I have a letterbox account, so if you ever want to check out my reviews of other films and see what I think. Uh, I already rated it on there. I gave it a zero stars. I didn't give it a negative, but I did not feel that it deserved anything at all. I just kind of was like, this is a nothing. Like, I am exactly where you're at. Done. I was thinking about it the whole way home today, and I was like, I'm going to give it a zero. Yeah. You didn't fall asleep. Didn't fall asleep, we but it was not it, entertained. But we never yeah. need to see it again. Never need to see it again. Don't know why it was made. Yeah. The end. Bye-bye, Incubus. So oh. let's see it go away. <laughs> Whoa, she tossed that thing. <laughs> so then. <laughs> so if they don't want to watch this, what should they watch? So you've already kind of referenced this, and it was the best thing I could think of to really relate to it, because there's been other movies that were similar, but I'm like, if you're going to go in, just go in with the originator, kind of. Not, maybe not originator? The originator? But one of the early ones. I mean, you could have gone with like Patrick or one. Of, oh, Patrick would have been a good, a, good, a good one. Patrick's about a guy who's in a coma who kills people. And there's a sequel, Patrick oh, too. But I didn't. I went with A Nightmare on Elm Street from 1984. Damn it, I wish I would have thought of Patrick. I could have changed it and nobody ever would have known. You can but, change it right now. I'm um, being want to. honest. <coughs> two. Out. You get a two for this week. Oh. Right, <laughs> Patrick and A Nightmare on Elm Street, the original 1984. I don't remember when Patrick is from, but it's a very similar plot, I think, except he doesn't take people over. I don't know what he does. It just sounds similar. I haven't actually seen it. So. There you go. All right. Dream what killers. Are, what are we watching next week? <laughs> next week from the big box of fun. Uh, this one came from Dollar Tree. Ouija Geist. From 2018. Oh, wow. This looks like a... Steam and pile of delightfulness. Yes. Uh, she will eat your soul, it says on the front. Oh, <clears> like Evil <throat> Dead 2, Dead by Dawn. This That's game really spills terror. It smells terror? Uh, Spells. Oh, spells. I thought it was like, it according, smells terrible. According to the Dark Eyes of London, it's a lot of fun to be had here. Impressive camera work, and the score is striking. Eyes of London? The eyes of London. Is that like Lords of London? I don't know. London by After Midnight? Just or what's a, judging on? from the back of it, it's not going to be a... I mean, it looks like it's got a little more production value than this last But we one. like these, and that's why you watch it, because you like watching us talk about bad horror movies and sometimes we find a, a little gem or something that's, what, that's that what our goal nuggets is in there that we enjoy yes um and we always enjoy watching it together so that's always a plus 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 after renting a new apartment a single mom finds a spirit board buried in the backyard always. this sounds familiar it sounds familiar which conjures the ghosts of a group of evil entities who haunt her and her family a local priest is enlisted to help her put these souls to rest before they break free and create hell on earth. 
Doesn't it sound kind of like it's not? We haven't seen no. this, but like, doesn't it count, sound kind of reminiscent to that one where like they find something in the backyard and like, um, yeah, I don't know what it was like a doll or something like that. Do you remember that? Yeah, it wasn't. And then the lady with the baby. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting a couple movies. No, mixed I, together, I think but... I know. I think I were on the same page. Um, but yeah, I don't know what that was called. I have to look it up. Uh, incidentally, speaking of spare boards, we're we're running out of time, but uh, I just have to mention. You know, we have a couple things around the house that are spirit board related because, again, we're spooky, a spooky couple. So you got to have some spirit boards lying around. But we've been looking for an original Parker Brothers Ouija board to buy, and we see them at flea markets. But we're trying to find a good price on one that's in good shape. This one's not a Parker Brothers, though. Joel. But we haven't found it yet. It's Hasbro. But my my wife found one at the most Random. strangest place that you could have found one for the most inexplicably low price that you could ever find, and. Uh, my my uh, oldest said we can't open it. Yeah, we got it at the Five Below Halloween. They are five below. selling them, and it says not to be used by children under three. So if you're three and under, no demons for you. No summoning demons. No demons for you. Yeah, so, I mean, I want to open it and look at it, but yeah, I'm not going to use it. Yeah. All right. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, you enjoyed this riveting episode of Dollar Store Drive-In. And until next week... Keep it cheap and creepy and don't open your spirit board box, apparently. Yes.